Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Pinto, and today we're going to be talking about the Yahoo data breach from 2014 to 2016. So an overview of my presentation, we're going to talk about the social and political background of the attack, a timeline, technical details of the attack, consequences, sources, the, my two questions to the audience, and a brief conclusion. So the social and political background. Between 2014 to 2016, Yahoo's network was accessed by Russian hackers, compromising an estimated 1 billion accounts overall. So why would they attack Yahoo? Yahoo is a web service provider similar to Google in the sense that its users are given email accounts that are used for electronic communication. Email is vital for 21st century communication and a multitude of other online accounts are connected to emails like Facebook, Instagram, or other social media platforms. They're all linked to our emails. So compromising our emails, in a sense, compromises all these other accounts. So that's something to watch out for. Emails often hold very confidential and important information, and potentially compromising these emails will cause irreversible harm to the victims. So Russia has a history of orchestrating cyber attacks on U.S. soil. Uh, if you see the graph to my right, you will see that between the years of 2015 to 2018, Russia conducted roughly a dozen or so attacks across the globe, the U.S. being no exception to that. And so U.S. Cybercom, which is the military's joint cyber command center, it's their all their defensive and offensive cyber operations amongst all the different branches, and the NSA classified Russia as one of the most dangerous cybersecurity threats in the coming future. So a brief timeline of the attack. In the year 2014, we start seeing the first instances of a possible data breach. That same year, Yahoo goes to the FBI with the details they have of the attack, which granted aren't a lot, but they know enough to suspect that this is potentially a state actor. In 2015, the attackers generate cookies onto Yahoo servers, which continue well into 2016. In 2016 of August, the full scale of the breach becomes apparent. And what that really goes to show is that the attackers were able to remain in the server virtually undetected for two years. So it shows that the level of expertise with these attackers, it's not just some sort of random group with a bunch of computers in a basement. This is a very well coordinated and orchestrated effort, kind of pointing more fingers towards the idea that this is a state sponsored attack. Later on that year, Yahoo goes public with the information about the potentially 1 billion compromised accounts, as well as losing a huge amount of public trust and brand image. So let's look at the technical details of the attack. The attack began with a spear phishing email. And so what that basically is, is an attacker sends an email to the victim. Um, the victim clicks on this email, thinking that it is a normal routine email and is accidentally sent to a phishing site. On that phishing site, the attacker can collect something called a nonce, which is this arbitrary number that is generated completely random that potentially has the session keys, the user information or passwords attached to it. And if the attacker is able to correctly guess the nonce, they are able to collect the victim's credentials. There's other ways that the phishing website may also send the victim's credentials to the attacker. It really depends on the sort of implementation of the website. Using that information, the attacker is able to log into a legitimate website using the victim's credentials that they just stolen. And the attack gets its name due to the fact of how similar it is to catching a fish with bait. Now, the really important thing to look at with an entire phishing attack is that it only takes one potential victim to compromise an entire server. So what that means is that while this email may have been sent to a number of Yahoo employees, all it took was really one of those employees to click on that link and potentially jeopardize the entire system. Now, once these attackers were in the system, they looked for two things, the user data and the account management tool. Now, with both of those tools, they are able to 
see the usernames of all these accounts, the passwords, security questions, answers to the security questions, and potentially all of the transactions of different emails amongst these accounts. So they virtually had complete control over the system at this point. Now looking at the attack in further detail, the attackers also created cookies and generated them across the server. And what these cookies do is basically record data that is being sent throughout the server. And the attackers are sent that recorded data, which allows them to see changes that are being made in the system, changes in account information and things of that nature. So having these cookies all over the place is basically giving eyes to the attacker across the system. Now, the attackers additionally installed a backdoor, which allowed them to retain access to the server. And what backdoors are, they're basically applications that allow attackers to access these systems remotely. And they can be installed in both software and hardware. Now, the details of this attack hint and basically state that they were only installed on the software because the attackers were not given physical access to Yahoo servers at any point. And they play, backdoors play a crucial role in targeted attacks because they can be used to take control of these systems and allow attackers to steal a number of different credentials and establish connections basically without being detected at all. And with backdoors, attackers are able to sort of set the groundwork for more serious attacks like port binding and other attacks of that nature. And the real important thing to realize is that they allow attackers easy access in and out of the system. So whenever they want to, they're able to jump right back in and they can leave whenever they'd like. And just in case attackers lost access to this backdoor, they took a copy of all of the user data, a backup copy of the user's data, and saved it so that even after losing access, they had it and they didn't really need to have the system anymore. And at that point, if they're able to make a backup of the data, your system's practically compromised. But the most important part of this is the consequences. So Yahoo to this day is still recovering over, like I said earlier, over a billion accounts were compromised. And if you see the graphic to my right, you will see that in comparison, comparison to other breaches this decade, like Tumblr, Dropbox, LinkedIn, none of them really compare to the scale of just how really terrible this breach was for Yahoo. And uh, they lost a huge amount of brand and customer base. I can say personally, like I used a Yahoo throughout my high school career along with most of the members of my family and we all suffered as a result of this breach. We all lost our data. Um, and another really important fact is that Yahoo revised their security policies. So the CEO at the time, Marissa Mayer, doubled the size of the internal security staff and invested roughly $250 million into security in initiatives. And one of those investments was the creation of something called a red team, which is this team of hackers that are going across Yahoo's network looking for vulnerabilities, looking for weaknesses. They're like paid ethical hackers in a sense. And it's a really great tool that a lot of large companies will use to ensure that their systems are secure. Um, the real cause of this issue and the fact that a company as large as Yahoo wasn't able to come back as quickly from this is that there isn't a lot of communication between the different parts of Yahoo. Some parts of the company understood that there was an attack as early as 2014 when the attack originated, but other areas of the company weren't even aware of the real consequences of it until it was too late. And what, that's really what was shown when Yahoo created their own private investigation to the matter. They found that large portions of the company were not in communication with each other so that when this attack showed up, a large coordinated response could not be created in time. These are my sources. Um, I have a difference between informative and images. Any of the sources that were informative but also had images were put into the informative category. So that's why you only see two image citations, even though there were a number of images used in this. So my two questions are, can you explain how a phishing attack works? What parts of the CIA triad does phishing affect? And what are some of the benefits to having a backdoor as an attacker? What are some possible countermeasures that can be used to prevent backdoors? So in conclusion, I discussed the social, political background of the attack, 
a timeline of the attack, technical details of the attack, consequences, my sources, these are my questions, and pending any other questions, um, this is my discussion on the Yahoo data breach, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.